Number 8. Hitler's Yad Tiger Tank Destroyers World War II saw some of the most significant innovations in warfare. Nazi Germany put all their efforts into creating one of the most terrifying weapons, the Hunting Tiger Tank. With its massive size and powerful anti-aircraft gun mounted on top, the creation was part of the German military's plan to outgun any enemy they faced. But it ended up causing the Nazis more trouble than they expected. German factories turned out assault guns and tanks by the thousands during wartime, but many of their tanks didn't have a gun turret attached because the vehicles were cheaper to make that way. This meant they could carry heavier guns and armor to ambush enemies. In the fall of 1943, Adolf Hitler was presented with a full-scale wooden mock-up of a hunting tiger or Jagdtiger tank with the gun mounted to the top. Fully loaded, the Jagdtiger weighed 83 tons with ammunition and its six-man crew. Most of the armor went to the front of the vehicle, which made the sides and back targets for gunfire from enemies. Its size and weight also made it very slow, earning it the Moving Bunker nickname. It could only travel 21 miles per hour. Even with a 690 horsepower engine, the motor wasn't powerful enough to haul the weight of the Jagdtiger, and the tanks broke down all the time. The guns had a limited range and it took two men to load ammunition and level the weapon before they could fire it. By the end of World War II, German forces were low on fuel and the Jagdtiger didn't help. It used up a lot of fuel, needed repairs all the time, and was challenging to tow when it broke down. The Allies advanced as the war waged on, making Nazi Germany desperate as more of the hunting tigers broke down. Finally, feeling like they were on the losing end, the head of the infantry division arranged a surrender of German forces in the Ruhr pocket on the western front of Germany. Number 7. The Secret Messages from World War II Carrier Pigeons When a retired probation officer in England was cleaning out his chimney, he found an unsent message from World War II. David Martin uncovered a 70-year-old secret code that may have been sent from a British commander fighting against the Nazis. Martin's home in Surrey was close to the wartime headquarters where the D-Day invasion was planned. The birds were known not only for their ability to return home with essential messages behind the line, but for their speed and how high they could fly. Eventually, enemy soldiers caught on that the birds were carrying messages and would shoot them down. Many of the birds made their way back to where Special Signal Corps soldiers would retrieve their messages and send them to their final destination by phone, telegraph, or messenger. They were so important to the war effort that over 250,000 pigeons were deployed by the British during the war. At first, Martin and his wife thought they had found a nest, but when they spotted the red capsule on its leg, they knew it was a historic discovery. After Britain's code-breaking headquarters got a first look at the capsule, they realized the message inside was written by a sergeant who was probably an airman who was reporting to the classified bomber command. It contained 27 codes, each with a combination of five letters and numbers. The message was written in code, so it was top secret. Sadly, the message has completely stumped codebreakers, and they released the code to the public, hoping someone could figure out what important message the pigeon was carrying when it ended up in Martin's chimney. So far, nobody has broken the code. Number 6. Buried Fighter Jet A team of workers in the Netherlands uncovered a piece of the past when they began excavating filled-in World War II bomb craters at the airfield of the Dielen Air Base Museum. The team was stunned when they swept away decades of dirt and spotted the distinctive nose of an ME-262 Schwalb fighter jet. As they continued to dig, four gun ports along with the jet's windshield, heavily armored glass, and nose-mounted cannon were revealed. After a day's worth of back-breaking work, they also uncovered two nose-mounted cannons and the jet's wing sections. So finally, they had an intact jet from the Second World War right under their feet, which remained hidden for 70 years. The task soon became too difficult to continue by hand, so they returned the next day with earth-moving equipment to free the fascinating find. After that, it was up to historians to figure out the origin of the jet. Luckily, they found evidence in historical records that only nine ME-262s were shot down in the country. The closest came down in a nearby village called Elden, but it wasn't the Allies who brought it down. Other records from the Luftwaffe, Germany's armed forces, say the Germans themselves mistakenly shot down the jet. After doing a little more digging in the archives, the museum found that the plane they'd uncovered was the first of the ME-262s ever built, making it a once-in-a-lifetime find. The workers couldn't help but wonder how the jet ended up buried at the bottom of a very deep hole in the Netherlands. The answer came by looking at the country's state at the time the jet would have flown there. The Luftwaffe controlled the airfield and rather than let their highly secret jet fall into enemy hands, they buried it on site, hoping that no one would know it was there. For 70 years they were successful, but now, thanks to the curiosity of a group of museum workers hoping to preserve the past, the jet was carefully removed and preserved, 
and now on display at the Dillon Museum. Number 5. The Greatest Battleship Ever Built Once considered one of the biggest battleships ever built at 862 feet long, the HIJMS Musashi suffered a devastating loss when the ship took 19 torpedoes and 17 bombs in October 1944 during the Battle of Lake Gulf. It only took four hours for American and Australian forces to sink it, and it sat at over 3,280 feet on the bottom of the Sibuyan Sea near the Philippines until 2015. The Musashi was the largest class of warship when it was first launched. Using historical records from four different countries and topographical data to study the underwater landscape, co-founder of Microsoft Paul Allen and his team spent nearly a decade locating the ship. Unlike other vessels, Japanese warships didn't display their names on the side of the hull, so it took some time and more digging to uncover the origins of the wreckage. As the unmanned underwater vehicle approached the rusted iron hull of the 73,000-ton ship, it showed the bow, which had been damaged and blown open by torpedoes in the attack. Even after firing their anti-aircraft weapons into the sea in an attempt to make geysers big enough to knock down American torpedo bombers, the Musashi failed and fell victim to multiple waves of attack. Another massive dent pushed the hull inward, where another torpedo exploded outside the ship. Multiple hits were visible under the Musashi's main 270-ton gun, where its gunners tried but failed to dodge the impact. They were blown off the ship's deck into the icy water below. Even though it was considered one of the largest ships ever built, it was vulnerable to torpedo fire, losing power from the impact. As it sank, air trapped inside caused the ship to implode, with 1,000 crew members trapped and another 1,300 rescued by other Japanese vessels. Which Axis force do you think had the best navy? Let me know in the comments. Make sure to subscribe to the channel to show your support. Number 4. The Sinking of the USS Independence 64 years after sinking off the coast of California, a World War II aircraft carrier was spotted by a team from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. The USS Independence had been on the ocean floor near California's Farallon Islands since 1951. Still, even after all that time, the ship was not only mostly intact, but the team also discovered what might be an airplane sitting in its hangar bay. The ship was known for taking part in battles in the Pacific, but that's not what sank the ship. Instead, it was part of a series of nuclear bomb tests at Bikini Atoll between 1946 and 1958, experiments conducted after World War II to study the effects of the bombs. During that time, 23 nuclear devices were detonated on within or below the atoll, which is a ring-shaped chain of coral islands in the Pacific Ocean between Hawaii and the Philippines. After the nuclear tests where two atomic blasts ripped through the ship's hull, it was towed back to San Francisco, where scientists studied the effects of the radiation before the vessel was decontaminated. After the studies were done a few years later, the U.S. Navy towed it out to sea and scuttled the ship, sinking it. Almost 65 years later, the NOAA team used previous surveys to locate the Independence 2,600 feet below the surface. Using an underwater vehicle, they were able to see the destruction, which was only a few gaping holes. Much of the ship is still intact. It's unclear if the ship will ever be raised. Number 3. Japanese Submarine Aircraft Carriers of World War II one of the most amazing and intimidating inventions came during World War II when the Japanese developed a submarine that also served as an aircraft carrier. The I-400-class submarine was built with the idea that it would allow the Japanese to raid the American coastline during the war. The Imperial Navy developed it hoping to have an entire 18-ship fleet, with each carrying three Aichi M6A Sarin float planes that could take off from the submarine and bomb at will. The scariest thing about the subs was that they could travel to their destination undetected and run raids before their enemies even knew they were there. The subs had an extensive combat range and torpedoes on board for close sea-to-surface combat. They were a formidable ship that would have been devastating. But it was an ambitious project with only three ever completed before their designer, Admiral Yamamoto, was killed. The original idea came to Yamamoto after the attack on Pearl Harbor. He thought using aerial bombing campaigns by launching planes from submarines would help the Japanese defeat America. Only one year after the idea was announced, the first ships came off the production line. Four more were planned over the next two years, but only two were completed and entered active service. Each ship weighed around 5,900 tons and measured almost 400 feet in length. They also had a unique figure eight design to carry the weight of the aircraft hangar, which was watertight and boasted some of the largest guns ever placed on a submarine. Eight torpedo tubes made it a devastating piece of war machinery. After all the preparation for these massive crafts, the U.S. Navy later captured and sunk all the three completed ships. Number 2. SS City of Cairo 
In 1942, a U-68 German submarine spotted the SS city of Cairo, a mixed cargo and passenger ship on its way between Bombay and England. Releasing two torpedoes, the Germans watched as the ship sank, taking all 296 souls on board to the bottom of the Mid-Atlantic. The two-decked, two-masted ship was built in England in 1915 and weighed over 8,000 tons. Loaded with iron, timber, and wool, the ship set sail from Bombay to the UK. Along with the goods, a consignment of silver bullion was also placed on board. The captain directed his ship along the African coast, zigzagging into the South Atlantic. Over a month later, after leaving the port at Cape Town, the ship was struck by a torpedo. The captain managed to keep the ship moving, ordering one of his radio officers to send out a distress signal. Crew members loaded passengers and lowered them into the sea, trying to move away from the ship. When the sub surfaced, its captain directed some of those who had escaped in the lifeboats to a nearby island before apologizing for sinking the ship and leaving. The captain of the SS city of Cairo guided the lifeboats to a small island named St. Helena, 480 miles away. After about a week on rough waters, the boats started to drift away from one another, with some low on rations and others taking on water. Some of the boats were damaged and most of the occupants were either sick or died. For almost two weeks, the boats floated listlessly before another large ship, the SS Clan Alpine, that was heading for St. Helena, spotted them and rescued those who remained. By the end of the ordeal, 104 people had died. It took until 2011 for the search of the SS city of Cairo's wreck and the recovery to begin. Almost 17,000 feet below the surface, the wreck of the SS city of Cairo was located 1,000 miles from the nearest land in the foothills of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Using a submersible vehicle, a team from Deep Ocean Research set out to find the wreck. Unfortunately, weather and swell currents made the trek almost impossible. They were also plagued by equipment troubles with pressure and temperature fluctuations causing the systems to break down multiple times throughout the expedition. When they finally located the wreck, they found the ship broken in two on the sea floor with mountains of silt hiding the ship's remains. Parts of the propellers and pieces of the torpedo were also spotted near the wreck. Thanks to the team's efforts, they recovered close to 100 tons of silver coins at what was considered their deepest salvage ever. Number 1. The P-40 Warhawk The P-40 Warhawk was one of the most widely used fighters, including attacks on Pearl Harbor and fighting in World War II. But they didn't live up to their reputation, making them dangerous for the pilots who flew them. Even though they could outmaneuver and outfight most other planes, the P-40 wasn't well loved by those who flew them. In 1935, when fighter planes were needed in high numbers, the P-40 was put into large-scale production. After multiple failed attempts at making a worthy craft, the original design was modified to be more streamlined and to have better power and fuel consumption. It was first flown in 1938, but it still took some tweaking to get it up to the top promised speed of 366 miles per hour. They were also heavier than their original design, and the extended nose made visibility a problem for their pilots. Combined with their narrow landing gear, that made it hard to land. They were also notorious for being poorly maintained and not having access to spare parts. One tragedy that occurred in a P-40 was when a plane that managed to survive the attack on Pearl Harbor was on patrol over Oahu in 1942, and it spun out, killing the pilot. Through multiple redesigns and name changes, including the Kitty Hawk, Flying Tiger, and War Hawk, the P-40 is an infamous fighter plane that may not have been the best in the world. But it still has a reputation for being a workhorse that helped the British, Australian, New Zealand, South African, Canadian, and other forces battle their enemies for years. Thanks for watching. Which one of these incredible discoveries fascinated you the most? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like these. Thanks again and we'll see you next time for another amazing video right here on American Eye.